Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. It is a great honor to present the roundtable with Alexis Cisneros from Dealerware. And if you remember, Dealerware stood with the roundtable back in the early days when we were just getting started. And uh, Alexis, uh, welcome to the event. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much, Ted. Uh, it's an honor to kick everyone off this morning. I've been greatly inspired by keynotes at Fixed Ops Roundtable before. So uh, really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, as Ted introduced, my name is Alexis Cisneros, and I am a customer success account manager here at Dealerware. Uh, we are a fleet management software company that enables our dealers to manage their courtesy, loaner, or rental fleets while providing a timely and smooth experience for their customers, but also giving our dealers an opportunity to really efficiently track uh, their fleet inventory. Today, I am so excited to share the ways that we have created space, not just for us, but our dealers, to really commit to the concept of customer obsession. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how the phrase skip intro really influenced some of our founding principles for our customer obsession today. And I know this is not a new concept for our Fixed Stops Roundtable audience, I was really inspired by a keynote delivered by Liza Borges about a year and a half ago, talking about the uh, fostering a win-win culture at the dealership. It wasn't just her story and her successes of the dealers that really inspired me, but mostly her passion, uh, really recruiting the masses to her mission of improving the lives of the many people that the automotive industry touches every day. But of course, as a provider of technology, while I feel I stand in the same room as Liza and the customer obsessed dealers that I'm sure are here today, I do feel like I sit in a bit of a different corner. And so today I wanna to continue to share our journey from vendor to partner and some of the things that we've learned along the way to enable just the environment that groups like Carter Myers Automotive and many of you that are in the audience today are continuing to promote. We can all agree that the first step of customer obsession is really understanding the customer. And we know that that means understanding what the customer wants to accomplish, uh, their budget, how much money they have to accomplish that goal, but most importantly, how much time they have. I have really had the luxury of working with dealerships all across the country and seeing many different operations from brands, sizes, regions, and this is what I can report back. Every dealership is unique in their own way, but every dealership customer values the same things. From the way that manufacturers and dealer groups are approaching new products, like appointment schedulers, check-in tools, to the way that service departments are really utilizing different technologies, uh, especially in light of the inventory shortages we're seeing today, like Uber or Lyft, what we know is that time remains the most valuable currency from the top down. But this is not unique to automotive. Let's take uh, one of the most vital apps that is in my home today, Netflix. I think many of us are uh, pretty familiar with the skip intro button that is at the very beginning of our most bingeable shows. The streamable asked a really intriguing question about this button. How much time is it really saving? And are you ready for this? In one day, this button is clicked 136 billion times, million times, uh, saving members an astonishing 195 years in cumulative time. I don't think Netflix is far from hitting the billions, but either way, it's an astonishing metric. So of course, I had to take it a, bit, a step further, right? What does this mean for us in the automotive industry? For me, I thought of the 15 to 20 minutes that a customer spends when waiting to uh, get a loaner or a rental at a desk at the dealership. If we could offer them that same skip intro button, how much time would we save them and ourselves? 15 minutes, it's not a lot, uh, but it can be life-changing. And I want to tell you a story about a time where that felt uh, very relevant. I'm going to take you back to a time that is far, far away. 
uh, it's not actually that far. <laughs> it's more like uh, April 2020. I think we all wish it was a little bit farther away than it really was. At that time, I was settling into my new office, which was actually my kitchen. Uh, we had all been sent to work from home for about two weeks in to what we would later find out to be um, almost two years of time spent there. My house was in chaos. My animals are all over the house. My family is finding different rooms among the house to try and work or go to school. Uh, we were all just trying to figure out what this new normal meant. And while my house was busy, dealerware was busy -er. We were taking phone calls morning, noon, and night from our dealerships that uh, were truly walking into a variety of different experiences. Some of them were experiencing their very first shutdown of many, we come to find out later. Others were talking to their colleagues on the phone, watching the news, and calling us to try to prepare for what we found out later was really the inevitable. Um, and through all this, our team was really just trying to do everything that we could to be as helpful as possible. And on one of these days, when the dogs are going crazy and the house is nuts and the phone is ringing off the hook, I got a phone call from the general manager at Fox Valley Volkswagen St. Charles, and her name is Gabrielle Abinion. She called me at 1140 that morning, and she was in a panic. <laughs> I didn't get a lot of context from that phone call, but what I did understand was her sense of urgency. She had 20 minutes to upload vehicles that needed to be contract at noon, and she didn't have the time. So I told Gabrielle I needed to get to work and I hung up the phone. I did just that. I got the VIN information I needed. I uploaded all the information she needed. And I called her back just before noon to say, contract away. You're good to go. Call me if you have any questions. As soon as I got off the phone with her, I went to make a sandwich. <laughs> Not just because it was lunchtime, uh, but because it was just another day at the office, or in this case, my kitchen. Um, I did what any uh, customer obsessed person does, right? I listened to her problem, I understood her sense of urgency, and I got her a solution as swiftly as possible. I really didn't think about that phone call again until the next morning when Gabrielle sent me a note and I quickly understood why she was in such a panic that morning. Those vehicles were getting ready to go to some very important people. If you would have told me <laughs> that 20 minutes of work I did before lunch on a Tuesday would have resulted in helping frontline workers take care of sick children, I, I would have never believed you. This is the moment that I became customer obsessed. But more so, it's the moment that I understood that my obsession with you, the dealer, really creates the space for you to be obsessed with your own teams and your own customers. And in the case of Fox Valley Volkswagen St. Charles, your communities. I know that you've all experienced things like this in the last two years. Requests that put you on the front line of big needs and drastic changes, just like us. We were able to help Fox Valley Volkswagen make a drastic impact in that 20 minutes because we understood the strategic pieces that needed to be in place in order to make really great things happen fast. And so that's what I wanna to talk to you about today how we emphasize process, technology, and people, and encourage our dealers to do the same, to create these type of moments over and over and over again. So let's dig right into it. Let's talk about process. Step one, measure your customer life cycle. This isn't just meant to be a dissection of where your customer goes and who they talk to, but to really analyze the time that they spend in those interactions. Are there any lapses in communication between your BDC and your service advisor? Are there any mechanisms that you can create amongst your service departments or the different members that speak to that department so that they can communicate earlier and more often to save those really timely interactions? And do this often. 
we understand that there is some seasonality to the dealership, no matter how busy the service department is. Summers and holidays, how do these months mark up to each other when it comes to the life cycle of your customer? And what adjustments do you need to make based on that volume? Once you've documented this process, take all that data and turn it into actionable insights. And I know data, the buzzword of the decade, right? We're fixed stops and we're drowning in it. And sometimes it can feel overwhelming or maybe even more like a data readout than it does something that you can take action on. By reviewing trends and comparisons in a way, whether that's internally year over year, quarter over quarter, or externally with other dealers that are in your group or in your brand, Taking these comparisons and turning them into actionable insights will deliver great value, particularly for my next suggestion, performance reviews. Bringing your team together to share these trends and comparisons on a regular basis is such a great way not to just identify some training opportunities at the dealership, but also create the space for your team to share their own ideas from the foxhole that is the service drive. What patterns are they seeing in their customers' requests or their customers' experiences? What tools do they need in order to shave off a few seconds or a few minutes from their interactions every day? What are the really sticky, mundane, day-to-day -day activities that they find themselves doing that can be automated or processed so that they can spend time on higher value activities? Taking 30 minutes to an hour on a quarterly basis might sound like a really big ask for a department as busy as service, but I tell you the juice is worth the squeeze. Those 30 minutes to an hour every quarter could result in hours, or days, or weeks worth of time saved from automating these processes that you get to talk about here. Another very important piece of fine tuning your process is making sure that you're leveraging the right technology. Are you maximizing the value of the technology partners that you are currently using today in your drive? Do you understand how each of those tools are really serving you in your digital toolkit? Having somebody at the dealership that is constantly staying on top of new feature requests or providing product feedback to these partners, it really gives an opportunity not just to elevate your dealership and your team, but everyone that is in this virtual room here today. We're all in this learning curve together. And so another important piece that you can consider or another opportunity to look at with your team is finding every place where your service advisor is inputting the same information twice. Are there any integration opportunities with the existing technology partners that you have today? Is there one less login or one less screen that is gonna save your service advisor 30 to 45 seconds per interaction? More and more automotive partners are leveraging their integration opportunities to get your service advisors closer and closer to the fixed ops utopia that is one screen. But many of those integrations need the encouragement of dealers like you who understand what it's like in reality, not in the theory of a technical <laughs> sandbox, right? But more importantly, try new things. If there's another universal truth that I have found in working with dealerships all over the country, it is this. The pandemic has accelerated the future of the dealership. As my mother always said, and I hate to admit it, she's right, the only constant is truly change. And that has never been truer than it is today. Now is really the time to get out of your comfort zone and try to do things differently as we are all truly in this learning curve together. A very important part of the word together is people. And what really makes that community valuable is understanding the feedback loop of your customers. In an ever-changing digital world, making the dealership personal between texting tools, online appointment schedulers, apps that you use to communicate after um, an RO is created, it's a challenge to stay human. And tapping into the empathy and the relationship building of the customer is still so key. 
And so one of the best things that I have seen dealers do is leverage their CSAI, CSI <laughs> feedback in a really meaningful and intentional way. One of the most compelling stories that stuck with me from Liza's keynote talked about the phone call that she would make after their service appointments to really understand what they could do better and how their customer's experience went. Those are the kind of high value activities that your team can afford to do when they start to save time in the processes and the technologies that we've discussed earlier. Those kinds of phone calls that Liza's team made really make customers feel valued and heard. And it's what wins business back. And while the voice of the customer is extraordinarily important, I would argue there's a really close second, and that's your team. Those associates at the dealership that are making the customer-obsessed magic happen day in and day out, they might not always be in the service department either. During those regular scheduled performance reviews that we discussed earlier, I highly suggest taking some time to really elevate the voice of the champions that are at your dealership. Not just because they're special and they need to feel value and heard, but because the greater their voices, the greater the chance that your entire team is infected with customer experience, customer obsession. Those champions are contagious and it's the kind of epidemic that you want started in your dealership or your group. I also promise I will not make another COVID metaphor for the rest of this discussion. But that really brings us me to uh, my favorite of all these keys, celebrating wins. If there's anything that I can encourage you to do with all of the time that you save, it is this, taking time to celebrate what it looks like investing in processes, technology, and people. Not only do I love celebrating wins because I love a good party, I love a good feel-good moment, uh, but also, this is something that I have seen implemented that has really changed the lives of dealerships and the people that work within them. I would love to take a few minutes to celebrate a few dealerships that performed in a phenomenal way in 2021. I'm going to start with Audi North Miami at 98% utilization across the year. A dealership that has perfected their processes to keep their courtesy fleet moving and their customers moving too is going to have a wonderful fleet utilization. This means that the dealership is operating at maximum efficiency and having some great customer communication. But it doesn't stop there. I'll go into Lehman Volvo Cars of York with under a day length of loan. I'll state the obvious. <laughs> that means that their customers that had a loaner had their repair orders completed in just one day. Not only are they leveraging technology to manage their length of loan data and keep their processes airtight, but this is another example of stellar communication between a service advisor and a customer to ensure that that time to return is as succinct as possible. Next up, we all know that time is money, but Mercedes-Benz of Manhattan showed that in a very real way. Nearly a quarter of a million dollars in fuel and toll cost recovery is just a symptom of what it looks like to replace some of those mundane, everyday tasks with technology to automate not just time savings, but another very nice cherry on top, cost recovery savings too. Next up is Toyota of Laramie. One of our dealerships that is currently performing rental uh, because they listened to their customers. Those customers had a need, whether they needed an SUV over the weekend for their outdoor outing or a vehicle for their mother-in-law to make sure she had her own ride around town for the weekend. Uh, whatever that is, whatever that reason was, they decided to implement rental and man did it pay off literally, at over $3,300 in revenue per vehicle per month. And last but not least, we have Lexus of Stevens Creek. With the largest contract volume across our entire dealer base, they interacted with their customers over 26,000 times. That would have been a lot of paper. <laughs> but their service manager, Monica Slezak, knew that the importance of digital contracts and leveraging technology to save her team time was imperative. And in 2021, they did just that at 273 days saved. 
I did the math. That's nine months that her team got back with their very large customer base of their own. These dealership and these dealerships all made improvements in the areas of process, technology, and people that unlocked time for them. Maybe it's just 15 to 20 minutes, but think about how much that can mean for our customers. We know across all of our dealers, it means a lot. It means employees with more time to succeed and customers with more time to live their lives. And we know for us among our customers, it means a total of 52 years in time saved in the past year. So I'm going to leave you with this. I challenge you to find your own skip intro button in the name of customer obsession. Relentlessly fine tune your processes, leverage your technology partners and the fresh ideas of your very own team. Elevate the people in your dealership that are really making the magic happen day in and day out. And most importantly, don't forget to celebrate. This industry is not for the faint of heart. Mm. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I am so proud to be part of the automotive industry today, even if it is from this very special corner of the room. I really appreciate all of you sharing this virtual room with me today. Uh, I really look forward to hearing from all of you. If you have questions or feedback, gut reactions, ideas that you wanna chat through, uh, please feel free to email our team at the email that you see below, F-O-R-T at dealerware.com. Uh, we're so happy to answer any questions that you might have. And if we don't know that answer, we are happy to learn together <laughs> and find the right place to connect you to. Um, so thank you again, Big Stocks Roundtable. And of course, Ted, it's such a pleasure to be here. Alexis, great job. And, uh, you know, it really hits home with some of the things you said, like the redundancies and, you know, entering something into the DMS multiple times. You know, I think everybody here can relate to that. So you've really, at Dealerware, streamlined the process uh, for the both the consumer and for the employees. So uh, thank you so much. Um, Alexis, again, if we want to reach out and learn more about what Dealerware does, how do we get a hold of, uh, of you folks? How do we learn more? Yep, please. F-O-R-T at dealerware.com. And we'll make sure that we get you into the hands of just the right person. All right, everybody. You'll be in great hands with Dealerware. They've been with the Fixed Ops Roundtable since the early, early days. So Alexis, on behalf of all the first responders here, uh, thank you so much for uh, a great presentation this morning to, to kick us off. Oh, the pleasure was mine. Thank you, Ted. Alexis Cisneros from Dealerware here today at the Fixed Ops Roundtable.